knocked on the door, Jenny. Just knocked on the door. To be pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. There's nothing to fear. You're being pathetic. It's just a door. You've seen one before. Just knock on the door. Is she trying to hide, Jenny? Standing outside the principal's office like a little girl. It's just pathetic. You hesitating, hand shaking. You should be embarrassed. You're not a little girl. It's just pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. But what are you waiting for? Just knock on the door. Perhaps I'm awake. She's probably having a meeting or something. And Robert to be interrupted if anything caution in these situations insensible. Want you to avoid confrontation when possible. I'll call my colleague to then. like a wet tissue. Get on with it. Yes, 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 Miss Trentable. There's, um, in my class, that is, there was a little girl called Matilda Wormwood. Daughter of Mr. Harry Wormwood, owner of Wormwood Motors. Excellent man. He told me to watch out for the brat, though. Says she's a real ward. No, her mistress. I, I don't think Matilda is that kind of child at all. What? It's the school motto, Miss Honey. Babinitum S. Megatum. Bubbly tongue, S. Magdal. Children are maggots. <laughs> it must have been her who put that stink bomb under my desk this morning. I'll have her for that. Thank you for suggesting but, it. But, but I didn't, Miss Trunchbull. Matilda Wormwood is a genius. <laughs> Nonsense. I just told you she's a gangster. She knows the times tables. So? She's learned a few tricks. But, but she can read. So can I. I have to tell you, her mistress, in my opinion, this little girl should be placed in the talk form with the 11 year olds. She's a swim, a shrimp, an unhatched tadpole. I cannot simply place her in the top form with the 11 year olds. What kind of society would that be, Miss Honey? What about rules? Rules! <laughs> I believe that Matilda Wormwood an exception <laughs> to the rules. <laughs> Stop being pathetic, Jenny. Stop pretending, Jenny. That you're going to march in there and give them a piece of your mind. Leave it alone, Jenny. The more that you try, the more you just look like a fool. This is not your problem. You've not got the spine. You are a teacher, just go back to your school. But this little girl, this miracle, she seems not to know.
Matilda, can I speak to you for a second? I'm afraid I've not been too successful in getting others to recognize your abilities. So, starting tomorrow, I shall bring a collection of very clever books that will challenge your mind. You may sit and read while I teach the others. And well, if you have any questions, I should do my best to answer them. How does that sound? Matilda, this is the biggest hug in the world. You're gonna knock all the air out of me. very much. Oh, they don't actually, but I'm even poorer than most because of other reasons. You see, I used to live with my aunt, and one day I was out walking and I came across this shed. I fell completely in love with it. I grabbed the farmer and I begged him to move in. He thought I was smart, and he agreed. And I've lived here ever since. Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. I'm not strong like you, Matilda. You see, my father died when I was young. Magnus was his name. When he was gone, my aunt became a legal guardian. She had written, uh, and when I got my job as a teacher, she suddenly presented me with a bill for looking after me all those years. She had written everything down, every tea bag, every electricity bill, every tin of beans. She made me sign a contract to pay her back every penny. She even used a document to say, to say that my father had given her his entire house. Did he really just do that? Marcus, did he really just give her his house? I didn't know what to believe. Just like I could not believe that she would have that he would have killed himself. It is what she's that happened. You think, you think she did him in, don't you, Miss Honey? I don't know what to say. Although all those years of being bullied by the woman have made me pathetic, I was trapped. And that's why you live in a shed. <clears throat> Keeps me dry when the rain falls. This door helps to keep the cold at bay. On this floor, I can stand on my own two feet. On this chair, I can write my lessons. On this pillow, I can dream my nights away. On this table, as you can see. It's perfect for tea. It isn't much, but it is enough for me. It isn't much, but it is enough. Oh, Miss Honey, your aunt's got your father's house. She is everything that's yours. On these walls hang wonderful pictures. Through this window, I can watch the seasons change. By this lamp, I can read. And I, I am set free. And when it's cold outside, I feel no
much. But it is enough for me. It isn't much, but it is enough for me. Matilda, do you want to stay here with Miss Honey? Yes, yes, I do. And do you want to look after her? I do. Well, we are a bit short of room, so yes. Thank you. <laughs> so Matilda leapt into Miss Honey's arms. And hugged her. Oh, and Miss Honey hugged her back. I'm the Rodolfo. <laughs> away in the distance. Because they had found each other. Yes, they had found each other. 